In this video we are going to talk about the best areas to stay in Madrid. If you are planning a trip to the capital of Spain, one of the first questions that will come to your mind is where exactly should I stay? Hola, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trips Spain and Portugal where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. If you drove to Spain with your own car, the best you could do is avoid Madrid altogether. But if you are arriving by plane and want to get acquainted with the capital of Spain, this video is for you. Madrid has 21 districts, known in Spanish as distritos, formed by 131 neighborhoods in Spanish barrios. We are obviously not going to examine them all, but rather present you our pick of the best neighborhoods to stay if you plan on visiting Madrid. Each barrio has its pros and cons, and we will talk about them too. But before we present our choices of neighborhoods, we want to share a useful tip when choosing accommodation in Madrid. And for that, we need to go to the map of the city. Any hotel or type of accommodation within the area we're about to describe will be just fine. Much more so if it's close to an underground subway station. So the area encompasses a large chunk of the center of Madrid and it's limited by the Parque del Oeste to the west. The streets Alberto Aguilera, Sagasta and Genova to the north, Príncipe de Vergara on the eastern side of the Parque del Retiro to the east, and Paseo Reina Cristina, Ronda de Atocha, Ronda de Toledor, and Ronda de Segovia to the south. Does that mean there are no good locations outside the area we've just described? No, it doesn't. But if you choose a location within the area, your success is warranted. And why is that? Because most of the most important tourist attractions in Madrid are found within the selected area on the map, as you will see on the screen right now. So with you, our top pick. On the fifth place of our list, the neighborhoods of Chueca and Malasaña. They are two traditional neighborhoods to the north of Puerta del Sol, the very heart of Madrid. There are a handful of underground stations in and around the neighborhoods. For decades, few tourists would venture into Chueca and Malasaña, but today they are two of the coolest areas of the Spanish capital. Chueca is the gay district of Madrid, while Malasaña has become in recent years the hipster neighborhood of the city. As for the pros and cons of staying in Chueca or Malasaña, in favor, they are two of the trendiest neighborhoods of Madrid. Their location is good, north of the Gran Via and with good access to the Madrid underground network. They are filled with bars and restaurants, and they are lively day and night. And the cons are that there are not as many hotels as in other regions of Madrid, and that if your accommodation is not soundproofed, you might be annoyed by the sounds coming from the street all night long. The two neighborhoods are mostly formed by narrow streets. A final comment on Chueca and Malasaña, the modern vibe of the neighborhoods might not be everyone's cup of tea. If classic accommodation and areas are your thing, look elsewhere in Madrid. On the fourth place of our list, the Barrio de las Letras, the literary neighborhood of Madrid. It is located in the heart of Madrid. While there are no underground stations inside the area, there are a few close to its boundaries. The Barrio de las Letras, also known as Huertas, owes its name to the fact that famous Spanish writers such as Cervantes lived in the area. As for the pros and cons of staying in Las Letras, in favor, it's a truly charming district with its mix of the old and the new. Its location is excellent, there are lots of bars and restaurants, and it's lively day and night. The cons, it is formed by narrow streets not reached by the public transportation system. There are no buses or underground running through the district. And if your accommodation is not soundproof, you might be annoyed by the sounds coming from the street all night long. We simply love the Barrio de las Letras, but if you stay in the area, you need to be aware that it is a very lively district until the early hours of the morning. On the third place of the list, the Gran Vía, which is not a district or neighborhood as such, but rather one of the most important streets in the center of Madrid that touches on some of the districts we mentioned here 
on our list. It is famous for being the street that never sleeps. It concentrates a huge amount of shops, hotels and theatres. The tourist industry like, likes to call it the Spanish Broadway. There are many underground stations along the avenue, as for the pros and cons of staying in the Gran Vía. In favor, it's an excellent location close to so many interesting points of Madrid. There's a huge range of accommodation, and if you need to go elsewhere, there are plenty of public transportation services along the avenue. There are many bars and restaurants, and if shopping is your thing, the Gran Vía is one of the top addresses in Madrid. And as for the cons of staying in the Gran Vía, there is heavy traffic 24-7 and there are huge crowds all day long. When we choose the Gran Vía area, we do so because of all the benefits that come with its strategic location, but it could hardly be described as a quiet choice. On the second place of the list, the Madrid de los Ausias, in English, the Madrid of the Habsburgs. It is the name given to the historic center of Madrid, built during the Habsburg dynasty, known in Spanish as the Casa de Austria. There are many underground stations around the district. As for the pros and cons of staying in the Madrid de los Austrias in favor, it is a neighborhood full of history. Some of the most important tourist attractions of Madrid are located here. You will be right in the middle of nearly everything. There's a huge range of accommodation to choose from. There are many bars and restaurants, and it is well connected to the public transportation system. And the cons of staying in the Madrid de los Austrias. There are huge crowds all day long, and there are quite a few narrow streets. The Madrid de los Austrias is one of our top choices when we are looking for accommodation in Madrid. The feeling of being transported into the past is just wonderful. Time for our top pick. It will come as no surprise that it is a neighborhood right in the middle of our previous four choices. It is Sol. We are talking about what it's known as Sol from a tourist point of view, as the boundaries of the district known as Sol are slightly different. Sol has Chueca and Malasaña and the Gran Vía to the north, the Madrid de los Austrias to the west, and the Barrio de las Letras to the east. This is Madrid Central, the very core of Madrid. As you can imagine, there are many underground stations around the district. As for the pros and cons of staying in Seoul, in favor, you are right in the center of Madrid, close to nearly everything, and when it is not close, it is really well connected. There is a huge range of accommodation, there are many bars and restaurants, and it is well connected to the public transportation system. The cons of staying in Seoul, there are huge crowds all day long. Most protests and demonstrations in Madrid take place around the Puerta del Sol. When we go to Madrid, Seoul is our top choice. We have to be honest, it is far from being perfect. It is not necessarily the nicest part of the city, but being close to everything for us is fundamental. So now that our list is over, let's go back to the map to show you all our choices together. Number five, the hip neighborhoods of Chueca and Malasaña. Number four, the literary quarter of Madrid, the Barrio de las Letras. Number three, one of the most important streets of the capital, the Gran Vía. Number two, the historic center of Madrid, the Madrid de los Austrias. And top in the list, so the center of the center of Madrid. Does this mean there are no other suitable areas to look for accommodation in Madrid? Far from it. We've just listed our favorites. But there are other regions, from Lava Pies, which is within the circle in the map, to the Barrio de Salamanca, which is outside the map, and both are perfectly fine, and even further away. Just make sure, wherever you stay, there is an underground station nearby, and you will be fine. If you find a hotel and would like to know our opinion, drop us a line at the commentary box below. We'll be delighted to help. And if you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. Thank you very much. And if you're new to the channel, take the opportunity to subscribe. It's just a click on the round button that will shortly appear on screen. We'll see you soon on another video with tips for a road trip in Spain or Portugal. Até mais. Hasta la próxima. See you soon.